artists, welcome to the April edition of Mixed Media Menagerie, a little collaboration between Laura, Erin, myself, and a guest artist every month. As you saw a few seconds ago, this month we are using coffee or walnut stain, a vi um, vintage colors, and a photo transfer. Or in my case, I'm using more of image transfers and I use an actual photo. So it's been a long time since I've done an image transfer or a photo transfer in my art journaling and I'm going to admit to you right here that this is my third attempt. If you look really closely on that left side you can see that the gesso is still wet and you can kind of see maybe a hint of what I tried behind it. I tried a couple times, gessoed over the first, tried again, this gessoed over the second, and now this is my third attempt at trying to remember how to do an image transfer. Now, I could have Googled it, I could have looked up tips and tricks, but I kind of remembered what I had done in the past, so I just went with it and played, and after all, that's what an art journal is for. So I'm just using some book text here and some matte medium and I'm just wanting to get the a light, I guess, coating of the text down. I'm not wanting like a true full image transfer. The really cool thing about using book text is because the text becomes like uh, backwards and reverse and it just becomes a texture in the background and it looks like text but it's not really text. And then also with using the um, image transfers from a book. Your background is still completely like smooth. You don't have the bumpiness from using book pages. So even though it's like a tedious process and takes a lot of time, as you can tell from how long this is taking me, it's really kind of a cool effect. And it is something I should probably do a little bit more often when I art journal. Now after getting that book text down, I'm gonna use some printed images. These are from a company called Red Lead Paperworks and they're um, printed that they send you and they work really well for image transfers. If you don't have a printer, you know, the right kind of printer, which you'll have to Google it, I don't remember. I'm sure there's tons of YouTube tutorials on it as well, but I do know that these work super successfully and I had a few hanging around, so I wanted to also use them in my background. I didn't have a whole lot that were going to work with my subject, so I cut them up and used them in bits and pieces on my two sides here, the left and the right. I'm concentrating on the right side because like I said, that left side is still wet with gesso and I'm gonna um, use these images on both sides and I don't want them perfect. As you can see, they're coming out kind of like tattered and torn and really kind of aged looking and that's the kind of look I want to go with my pages here. So um, I'm using the same process, matte medium, put it down on my page, let it rest a minute, kind of peek behind it and peel it up when it's ready because I'm not allowing it to rest too long and because I'm not like using a ton of matte medium, they're not coming out as 100% perfect image transfers, but again, that's the look I'm going for. For the rest of this image transfer process, I am speeding it up just a little bit more than normal as to not bore you, but I also wanted you to see the process and how I'm laying out the elements and using bits and pieces and how it's turning out. And I'm going to also in just a minute use the pieces of paper that still had some of the images left on them. Like I said, I wanted them tattered, torn, not looking perfect, really kind of aged in the background to go with our vintage feel. There it is right there. I'm using a little bit that didn't turn out to add more to my background. You've probably also noticed that I like to save time. I'll put several images down at one time and work with them again because it is a long process and does take some a little bit longer time than just sticking down your normal book text with matte medium. You have to wait for the images to actually transfer to the pages in this case. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I'm going to pick up another collage image seat here from Red Lead Paperworks. I don't have the links to these, um, but I will link their website below. I'm sure you can search for eggs or whatever, but they do have a lot of wonderful um, prints that you can purchase. And like I said, they work really well for image transfers. And here's a little close up really quick one of the other pages coming along and I'm sticking down the rest of those eggs um, to add that color to the background again for that weathered worn vintage look that I'm going for. And now that my gesso on that left side is dry and the right side is finished, I'm going to work on the left. Now normally I probably would have worked on the left and the right at the same time. However, I was waiting for that gesso to dry. So now I'm going to continue that same process of adding the book text to the left side and then those um, images again, the other half of the postcards and some more eggs and then whatever remnants are left that didn't, that didn't transfer to kind of add um, that same feel to the left side. So since I had cut that postcard in half, I'm just adding the other half to the left side to make the pages look a little bit more cohesive. Continuing just to create my first layer here, I'm developing like a vintage background with the eggs to go with this bird theme that I have in mind that kind of came together in a really interesting way that I'm going to explain as we go on here um, throughout this process. If your images get a little too stuck, you can spray a little water on them for help. I also like to use a baby wipe to kind of clean off the page a little bit, clean off my desk. It is a little bit of a messy process. And I'm adding a few more eggs to the left, decided to add another one to the right. And those eggs on top and the ones on the bottom came out a lot better. I used a little bit more matte medium, took a little bit more time, but I really like the variants here. I like that some are a little bit more scratchy and some are more perfect. It adds a lot more interest to the background to have varying um, types of images back there. And now that all my images are down, I'm adding a really good coat of matte medium just to protect them as I continue to work on top of these pages. My next step is to add just a little bit more like grunge and shadowing and shading to the background. There's a lot of white and then a lot of color, but there's no kind of mid-tones in between. So I'm trying to unite these images with a little bit of this Lyra graphite crayon. It's water soluble, so I'm scribbling on it using some water to dissolve it. Also using my finger to rub it in just a little bit to add some fun, fun shadows and shading. Next, I picked up this Stencil by Stencil Girl products. It's got little birds on it. It's gonna add to my little bird theme. I will have all of the supplies um, linked in the description box below if you're interested in purchasing any of them. I'm using a foam applicator to stencil through the birds. I'm just picking and choosing which little birds I wanna use and where I want them on the page. I'm trying to create some movement from left to right 
and maybe like a little flight of birds in the background and um, being really like cautious of where I'm putting them to kind of help unite the background layers and also to add that movement from left to right. And while those birds are still a little wet, I'm gonna um, take my paintbrush, some water, some watered down paint and add some um, watercolory kind of effect to the background, kind of scruff up those birds a little bit. And then I get the idea to drip the paint as well. So I'm gonna drip it um, down and in a little bit, I'm gonna flip the journal and drip it the other way as well. I like to always kind of start minimal and then I can add more if I need to. As I was adding that um, watercolor y paints gray to the background, I decided I needed a few more birds. So I'm now I'm adding a few more birds to that left um, top, but I'm gonna add a few more birds. To, I mean, that was right. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add some to the left as well. And I'm continuing that same watercolory paint drippy process to kind of add, you know, like a cloudy sky movement of birds as my layer in the background. I'm picking up my hair dryer on the cool setting to try to speed that process around of drying it. I'm a little anxious here to finish, but I'm also like, I like to use it as a tool to help move the paint. And then I'm gonna pick up my paintbrush to add a little bit more of that paint's gray in spots that I feel like it's missing. And now that that Payne's Gray is completely dry, I picked up my walnut ink. I chose walnut ink instead of coffee. I don't know, I just prefer it, but coffee is a lot of fun too. It's probably something you have on hand. Um, if you don't have walnut ink on hand, it's a fun um, kind of layering tool to use. People use it in all different ways. I just use it to grunge up my pages in typical Nicole fashion. I'll have the walnut ink I use linked below as well. Um, like I said though, this, um, prompt we could either use coffee or walnut ink. I've watered down that walnut ink a little bit and I'm starting off light and I'm going to layer it darker um, as my eye kind of feels it needs to be darker in places. I did pick up a little pipette a minute ago to help draw the ink out of the pot there. It's not a really good way to get it out other than that so you don't contaminate it. Just a little hint if you buy the um, Daniel Smith walnut ink as well. I'm continuing just to add more layers of walnut ink. I'm putting some on the edges, some little shadows here and there where it feels like um, maybe the, the ephemera in the background needs to be united a bit or cleaned up. And I'm darkening the areas in the Payne's Gray as well.
And with the hairdryer back out on the cool setting, I'm speeding up the drying process and adding a little bit more walnut ink for darkening as I go. So I feel like my background is pretty much finished. I'm not gonna add a whole lot else to it, but I have a lot of ephemera and I'm gonna take some time to figure out what I wanna add. But first I'm going to type up a little saying here on my typewriter. The month of April, there's an artful memories challenge going on. I knew I couldn't participate in it all month. I'll maybe participate in a few um, as I have time with 100 day project and other things going on. I just couldn't take on another another challenge, but I thought it would be fun to see what the um, one for the sixth is, which is the day that the menagerie is being published. And I looked at the saying and it was perfect. So I'm typing out the little challenge saying here, and this is what has inspired my journal spread. It is so much fun how all these little elements came together to create my page this month, from the Artful Memories Challenge, to the bird stencil that I got from Stencil Girl recently, to feathers that I found on my um, in my garden recently that I collected, to um, the bird ephemera that I have, or bird, the egg ephemera I happen to have. It's so much fun how just everything came together. So the challenge for today was she loved birds and they loved her and her pockets were always filled with fallen feathers. Now I'm picking up some cool sari ribbon that I also recently purchased that has birds on it. I'm going to pick up a few other things and try to figure out how to put this background and all of my um, fun little pieces in front with the saying. I also have this picture that I got recently of a lady with chickens all around her. So you can really tell how... Um, Everything just came together perfectly to make this page. Continuing to rearrange and figure stuff out as I go here. I'm using Dina Wakely's heavy gel medium to stick everything down. I really wanted to use that longer tag and try to figure it out, but in the end didn't use it. It's just a really um, back and forth process trying to figure out exactly how to put all of these elements that I want to use on this page together in the perfect way. I wanted a little pop of that teal on the right, but didn't want to use the entire tag. So I ended up ripping it in pieces and putting a little bit of um, ledger page on top to create a little collage element over there. Now I'm adding a little bit more of the saying, trying to figure out how to fit it in with the feathers that I want to use and make it all to come together. Um, now I'm fi finally sticking down those feathers and the rest of the saying to kind of um, put the final pieces, um, final touches on these pages. If you like using found photographs as much as I do in your art journaling, I'll link the information below to the Artful Memories Challenge. It's not too late to participate. Um, it's a whole month filled with different sayings about um, people and characters that you can create um, using. Like I did for this page, there's a lot of people participating in it and a hashtag to use on Instagram. And I'll have that all linked below. This challenge um, is by two um, artists that created this Artful Memories book. I happen to have a copy because I have a piece of art in it. I'm paging through it here so you can see it. Um, it not only has people's artwork in it, but a lot of cool projects that you can also create. Um, there's also some printables and a link to a website with other additional printables inside. I'll link the book below if it's something you're interested in. 
And there's a little piece of art that I have included in the book. My um, current here journal page is not at all taken from this book. However, I wanted to share it with you because it's a really neat tool to have if you want to have some more creative ideas um, to use in your art journaling. This is not sponsored by them at all. I just wanted to share with you where my idea came from as far as my saying and um, about the book that um, started the movement, I guess, for this April challenge. And now I'm just adding some final little detail touches to my pages. Once all of that top layer is down, I like to make sure it looks embedded into my background. So I pick up the Payne's Gray and the Walnut Ink to add some on top the photo, some on top the saying, on top the tag. I kind of look at the background and see where there's some blue or some walnut ink that I kind of make sure it looks like it maybe spilled onto that photo. I keep a baby wipe handy just in case I get a little bit too much, I need to wipe it away. But I'm just making sure my images and my sayings look like they're cohesive and embedded into my journal page. And that's it. That's my maybe crazy bird lady pages for the month of April. I want to thank you so much for watching. Um, make sure you check out what Laura, Erin, and our guest artist Michelle have created this month. would love for you to take on the challenge each month with us and also join us as a guest artist. We still have a few months that we don't have a guest artist. You can apply here at this URL. It'll also be in the description box below. It's not fancy. It's just a little bit of your information so you can tell us you're interested in being a guest artist. And now we also invite you to play along to grab this strange collection of things this month, create and share. Use the hashtag MMM. APR22 to create the tag along. I am absolutely floored and blown away and excited each time I see what people are creating. It is so much fun. Make sure you check out the past months. Um, other artists that have contributed and played along, they're just simply amazing. Again, thank you so much for watching, for following, for playing along. Make sure you check out what Aaron, Laura, and Michelle have also created. All the links will be below. Have a wonderful April and we'll see you again next month for our new challenge.